know, I, I signed on for three of these movies um, before I even did the first one. And um, that's a nervous thing to do, you know, to sign on to scripts you haven't even uh, seen. And so I was very eagerly awaiting the arrival of uh, the script. And, and uh, I got the script and I read it and my first feeling was a feeling of relief because it was good. And my next feeling was of excitement uh, because I was excited to get to work on it. There were a lot of contributors to the, to the story of this movie. Uh, we had a lot of great writers from Michael Shaben to Alvin Sargent, David Kep, Mr. Goff and Millar. Um, a lot of different people brought things to the story. And it was really uh, finding our way through these different ideas to the ones that reverberated. For me, the ones that reverberated with, with me, we found our way. There was no real formula. I think we were governed by certain givens. You know, we know Toby, and we know the age he is, and we know certainly the range, which is tremendous, that he can play. But it felt that, it felt right to us that the next movie be about, okay, now he's accepted the mantle. He's been on that road for a while, and there, there are positives and negatives. I don't know you. And I can't keep thinking about you. It's too painful. And we wanted to move on in a way that we still beat up Peter Parker. Peter Parker has to be beat up all the time, put to the test. Uh, job, love, life. Uh, it, it's really, it's like real life. It's never easy to do the right thing. So that's why I like the Spider-Man movie that we're making now because it's, um, it's about choices, and it shows, not like a message movie, but it shows how we can all make these choices. How will he weigh his personal needs against his sense of responsibility? That's the problem. He doesn't know what to think. Gonna make you mad not to know who you are. Your soul disappears. Nothing's bad as uncertainty. Maybe you're not supposed to be Spider-Man climbing those walls. And Sam, literally took this frame from the books, one of the biggest sagas in, in the Marvel Universe. And we felt that it's not easy to do in two hours, but we felt we really needed to go there. The biggest decision was who was his adversary going to be. And we had worked on um, Doc Ock. We had worked on him as a character visually for the first movie. We talked about having he and the Green Goblin together. But there was so much story to tell with the origin of Spider-Man, the origin of the Green Goblin. We really didn't think we would do the movie justice by having a third origin in there. Because he was a fan favorite and we realized the great possibilities cinematically with Doc Ock, which are really obvious when you read the Spider-Man comic books, he does all these fantastic things with these mechanical arms. We realized we wanted to have him. And there was the classic approach, which is Doc Ock, who is a revered scientist, developed this incredible thing, and what do we do with him? And uh, that's on one hand. Uh, on the other hand, you have, we had another storyline that for me, thankfully, didn't go anywhere. And it was uh, about um, Doc Ock, a younger Doc Ock, who is actually infatuated with Mary Jane and creates a love triangle. Um, some of us don't like love triangles, not like that, not with our main villain, and we went through a process, and I think we chose well. He is the ultimate enemy for Spider-Man, and that's why it's so interesting, because there's nothing Spider-Man can do that he cannot counteract. <laughs> It's wonderful to have a villain in the second picture where you can see his face, see their face emoting, expressing, whatever they're feeling. Um, 
Alfred's a great actor, and we really needed somebody with that strong sense of um, reality and somebody with a sense of humor, which Alfred has. This character, Doc Ock, the way that Alfred is creating him, um, he's really uh, a human being, a misunderstood man who becomes a beast. No! I had a meeting with Sam, which was very general. We just chit-chatted about stuff. And it was all, I just thought it was like a meet and greet. I, I didn't really kind of give it much thought because I didn't think for a second that I was really a serious contender for the part because I'd never done anything like this before. I didn't have any sort of track record in this kind of movie. I mean, if you look at my resume of films, you, you'd be, you'd be, you wouldn't be uh, blamed for walking away thinking, well, he's kind of like, uh, he does little independent arty movies. You know, every now and again he does a little studio thing here and there. but. I've never played a part this big in such a big movie. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. I think what I'm most gratified about is that for each character, there's an evolution. There's a furtherance of who they are and, and what their journey is, and there's suspense about where they're going. In the first draft, actually, we had uh, Harry put a prize on Spider-Man's head. We got rid of that because really it's more important for Harry and Peter to look at each other and Harry to say, if you knew who he was, would you tell me? Don't act like you're my friend. You stole MJ from me. You stole my father's love. And you let him die because he didn't turn in the freak. Isn't that right? Huh? Isn't that right? Huh, brother? I think that's the secret of Spider-Man. In the first one and the second one, they really took time to develop all the characters and, and give Peter Parker's uh, world away from Spider-Man, a, a life of its own. And, and, you know, it's a touching story. And I, I think that's why Spider-Man's the best uh, comic book movie around. You have a, a superhero who is almost reluctant about it uh, and is actually having to debate with himself whether it's worth giving up a regular life to take on the responsibility of being a hero, which is a really quite an interesting idea, you know, and, and, a, and an interesting dilemma, which I'm sure we would all be interested in finding out, asking ourselves, you know, well, if I, if I had all these superpowers and I could save the world, would I, would I give everything up to do that? You know, and, and it's an interesting question to ask yourself. Good stories show us the way. They show what is possible, and. Um, that's why I like this story so much, because this character is conflicted. He wants to be happy, but he wants to do the right thing, and it shows how you can take this journey as you mature and maybe have a little bit of both. I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble. It's good to have you back, Spider-Man.